You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Bend Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. It is a Freaker Friday, so freak out! (laughs) Oh my goodness, yeah. And you know what? I am going to be uh, joining the working world again, or at least the working away from the home world again, um, starting sometime next week. So, eh, I'll find out what my hours will be then, but hopefully it won't affect too awful much. I do know I'm not going to have to lose out on uh, evenings, but I may have to work a weekend or two, so uh, who knows, but we'll find out next week. In any case, yeah, you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10, also on the RLM Spreaker channel, the RLM Radio.xyz site, RLM TuneIn Radio Station, RLM Internet Radio Station, lots and lots and lots of RLM num num nums So, yeah, we're coming out everywhere. Freak out! I also realized that I woke up this morning... What the hell? I had people telling me, oh my God, something really dire and disastrous is going to happen yesterday, and it didn't. Well, it rained while I was mowing. (laughs) I just had one section to go back in the dog's area, which is the size of most people's normal yard, but... I got rain and thundered out, so and I didn't get to it today because I finished up my weed eating and played in the garden and picked another 25 pounds of cucumbers, and uh, I'm tired, by the way. I've been prepping cucumbers for pickling, and as soon as I get done on the radio tonight, I'm going to be a pickled Grammy. <laughs> doesn't sound near as fun when I say it. Damn it. Oh, well. Over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I see I lost a couple of stalkers, which doesn't surprise me because some of the ones that I gained, I'm guessing English is not their first language because I sure as heck didn't understand a thing they had on their page. But that's, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Um, You know, if you want to follow, come on along. Just don't bitch about where I lead you. (laughs) Because I don't have a freaking clue where I'm going either. So, thank you once again, Barman. And I saw JJ's was over here for a while. It looks like people are going nuts over I have no idea what right now. But uh, other than someone said something about did James Woods get locked out? Which, if that happened, (laughs) giggle, giggle, ha, ha. Because, I mean, I like a lot of his posts but man there's times he can be just flat ass obnoxious like what I consider obnoxious that's what the rest of the world considers damn dude you really went there um yeah so uh I don't know if he really got locked out or not but that that would be mm mhm um Oh, wait Saul the Algorist just shared local psychic correctly predicts 10,000 of the last zero Trump impeachments. <laughs> what good's it going to do? Seriously, we're going to impeach him. You know, the last one that was impeached, it did do a shit and thing too. So why bother? Quit wasting your time and energy, you nimrods. Okay, over here on Mines. Wow, they're just posting stuff like crazy. Let's see. If they live... Okay, wait a minute here. If they lived today, all of America's founding farmers would be, God, dandruff. Yeah, they would, they would be that too. Would be censored, deplatformed, and called Nazis. And uh, on CNN Politics, Facebook apologizes after labeling part of the Declaration of Independence as hate speech. <laughs> shock, shock. See, that's what happens when you have those lovely little algorithms that, you know, oh, oh, well, this'll stop it. 
Y'all need to stop and realize you can legislate till the cows come home. And if you ain't seen a cow, I'm sorry. But you can legislate till cows come home. That don't mean people are going to do it. Don't mean people are going to behave properly. You cannot legislate morality. You can't mo legislate critical thinking either. That's that's pretty much. I think if you tried to legislate critical thinking, that would be the ultimate in oxymoronic behavior. I really think it would. Because most people that seem to think you have to have legislation in order to know what to do and what not to do, obviously do very little critical thinking. So, moving along. Hi, Minds. How's everything going? Hope y'all are having a splendiferous whatever day it is for you. Because this is from all around the world. There's a lot of people over here that I don't understand the thing that they have written on their page. But they post some really cool pictures. <laughs> Yes, I'm easily entertained. And yes, Vinny, I said easily. So, Vinny can be all happy. Oh, hey, River Rose just shared, being negative only makes a difficult journey more difficult. No, boo, 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 boo. You may be given a cactus, but you don't have to sit on it. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's a little prickly, but it's okay. <laughs> I like that one. I have to remind that. Because that's, that's cool. Yeah. Don't sit on the prick. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. Moving along. <gasps> Over here on realliberty.org. Once again, Grimmy. Thank you for sharing and letting everybody know that I am live and in person. Or kind of, sort of live and in person. I'm here. I'm here. Barely. Because I was out getting stuff off of the line. I love line line dried clothes and towels and sheets. Ugh. And it wasn't too hot today and the breeze drew blew just right and everything smells line dried and mm. Yeah, I know. I'm hick talking. <laughs> it's awesome though. When you live out in the boonies and you don't have all that, you know, you got the tree pollen and you got some weird shit falling from the sky, but other than that, it smells good out here, unless the wind's out of the southeast, and then it smells like feedlot. So, <laughs> I also see Bobby Bain is over here, as well as Barman and Rob Works, and Ant was busy just a little bit ago, as well as the lovely Mary B. and Susan Pomerantz. We're all on here just a little bit ago over here on this effing site. Hi, Bob Renner. I see you posting stuff like crazy over here on this effing site. I need a quick drink of water. Ah, mucho better. And once again, thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know over here that I am live and in poison. Well... It's kind of sort of Memorex, kind of sort of, if you think about it. Uh, what? Oh, Cody Wilson detained in Taiwan over underage sex claim. Ah, uh, well, you know, somebody that comes up with something that the uh, system doesn't like is going to have slurs and slander and mud and possibly some made-up charges thrown at them. So, not saying that he didn't do something naughty, but, yeah, I'm betting, I'm betting that, uh, no, he didn't. I'm betting that uh, he figured out a way to print a gun at home, and they don't like that. They don't stop and think that those printers, they're not exactly cheap. And, uh, oh God, the onions got, oh, the average people swallow the same spider eight times each year while sleeping. Thank you, onion. Swallow the same spider, huh? Ew. Why does it come back? Oh, that means it goes through the hole. Ew. Ew. That's gross. Okay. Moving along. Over here on Fakey Book. 
I just grabbed something from Larry Woods over here. He just shared something rather interesting that I'm going to get to here in a minute. But uh, hey, Larry, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. I also see the lovely Mary B has been doing her thing over here. And I see Gary L's been doing his thing too. As well as a few other friends of mine liking and posting and all that fun stuff. But now, but now... Time to say hey to where you need to be if you want to give me static. Come on over to reallibertymedia.com and think of a nickname. Join the chat and say hey, because I'll say hey right back at you. Yes, Grim, I do have a frog in my throat. It's there to catch that damn spider that I swallow eight times in a year. Maybe I can wash it down. I don't know. Do I sound froggy? I've been playing out in the pollen, so yeah, my nose is a little... It's going to be fun. I just hope I don't have a massive sneezer time. Because, you know, tree pollen. Ah! What is that? Ocular? No, that's eyes. Moving along. In any case, over here in the RLM... I see Barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Grimner following right behind him, as well as the lovely Moose Girl. And they're going to be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to stick around or come back for that. It's always a grand time, at least from what I can tell from when I stay up. <laughs> I get up early, so, you know, it's kind of hard for me to stay up that late. I'm usually up... 6.30 latest, so yeah, kind of hard for this old broad to stay up that late, unless I'm, you know, properly motivated, like Moosey's on a F-bominator rant or something, then I'm properly motivated, because it's like, damn Moose, you go, girlfriend, what you yelling at now, do it, do it, okay, I also, <laughs> wow, <clears throat> excuse me, there's that frog, ribbit, Oh, I sounded froggy in the beginning. Huh, it must have been. I must have needed some liquid. I also see the lovely Kate is over here. Hey, Kate. Yes, here I come to save the day. <laughs> Mighty mouth is on its way. <laughs> I am kind of short, too, so you could still say mouse, but I think mouth is more appropriate for this. I also see Phantom is logged into the chat as well as Asmodeus Asmo, the lovely Beth Z. I saw her chatting earlier in the red pill. Um, Chloe got a double dip in a Chloe going on here. Uh, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, who will touch you with his noodly goodness. And it is Friday, holy day for the Pastafarians out there. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. Arg. And dress like a pirate. Just saying. D underscore C is also here, as well as Dakota and Frumpy. Frumpy. Yes, I did post a link about more gallons earlier. Thank you for noticing that, Frumpy. Um, oh, that was Frumped. And then we got Frumpy. I read that wrong. Or I got dyslexic. God only knows. Rob Works is having issues. Oops. Yay. I'm waving back at you, Miss Kate. <laughs> I know you can't see, but it's a cybernetic wave. Um, let's see. I'm here. Hey, I am here. Gromit is here as well as I be Don C. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. JJ's. No, no, no. JJ's from that Bonnie Scotland is here as well as Juana Taco. Hmm. You know, I, I know this is weird. This is weird. I don't feel like tacos tonight. What the hey? Usually I have a hankering for tacos, but no, no. I don't know what I'm going to have for supper yet tonight. Probably cucumbers. <laughs> I'm coming out my ears. I see a double dip in a kozu as well. And looky there, layer eight is here. Meister Bra. Hey, Woody. How you doing, hon? Moy, 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 moy is here as well as a trifecta of poxes in the chat. Pox box, poxified, and poxophone. Got some pompo pompo pon sauce going on here as well. And the lovely rain in Spain, although I'm sure she's not in Spain, is here. RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Well, frumped. Gosh darn it, you just got kicked. Uh, Rob Works is here again. 
or at least Rob Works underscore is here. I also see Sock Puppet and the F Bominator itself, Skittle. Skittle, I saw you said someone was supposed to do that to your mother. Do you know her? Is she going to get a kiss out of the deal? I'm just curious. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the trust number one is in the crowd. So how, ooh, can't, oh, there it went. My shoulder is not happy with me today. <laughs> Lugging around a weed eater. Oi, oi. Oh, well. So, time to get to some busy stuff. Some stuff that you just might really need to know. Or maybe something that I seem to think that you need to know. And you might be going, the hell she reading now? Uh, turn down the volume. Good God. So, this is from Larry Woods on his Limitless Energy Technologies page over on Fakebook. Or he's the one that shared it. No thanks. I do not want to get notifications. It's from CollectiveEvolution.com. It's the world's largest study on cell tower radiation confirms cancer link. This was published one month ago. And yeah, the image at the top pretty much says it all. But they also have a lovely little article as well. Thank you very much because... De me describing images, in, you know, it's like me trying to describe a rainbow. You're going to see a different one. Did you know that critters that do not have the photo cells like we do in, in our eyes don't even see a rainbow? Isn't that weird? Okay. In brief, the facts are a groundbreaking study shows the strong connection between cell phone towers and cancer. It's one of many showing how electromagnetic radi radiation is harming human health at an exponential rate and another example of industry trumps science. Now, to reflect on, there are thousands of scientists creating awareness about this, but the industry has become so powerful that they can do whatever they want. So how are they allowed to continue when they have definitive proof of harmful health effects. The hell is going on here? That's what I'd like to know. I think there's some double dealing going on in the back room and somebody's underneath the desk as well. I hope to hell they're enjoying themselves. In any case, <clears throat> scientists call on the World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer to reevaluate the carcinogenic carcinogenicity of cell phone radiation after the Ramazzini Institute and U.S. government studies um, report finding the same unusual cancers. And this was originally posted on Environmental Health Trust, which can be found at ehtrust.org. So... Researchers with the renowned Ramazzini Institute in Italy announced that a large-scale lifetime study of lab animals exposed to environmental levels of cell, cell tower radiation developed cancer. Now, okay. Number one, remember how they do these studies. Poor little bitty mice, they get a mutt as much in two weeks of like saccharin or whatever that it would take one person to consume like 10 pounds a day for 25 years. They get it in a very short amount of time because, you know, these people have very short attention spans apparently and they want to find out now. So God knows how they conducted this study, but still, here it is. Now, apparently it was a $25 million study of much higher levels of cell phone radio frequency or RF radiation from the U.S. National Toxicology Program or NTP. And it has also reported finding the same unusual cancer called schwannoma. Schwannoma. Okay. It's schwannoma of the heart in the male rats treated with the highest dose. And in addition, the RI study of cell tower radiation also found increases in malignant brain tumors in female rats and precancerous conditions, including 
Schwann cells hyperplasia in both male and female rats. Schwann cells. I thought Schwann was a truck that delivered frozen goods. Maybe that's just in my area. Connected with Tony's Pizza. They both started in Salina, from what I understand. Salina, Kansas, that is. So, the study, I know, random, irrelevant facts, but hey, that's what I do. Now, the study findings are making headlines. You can read the Cory de, de Bologna article on cellula... Cell, okay, that's in Italian. And it basically says they cause very rare tumors. Now, our findings of cancerous tumors in rats exposed to environmental levels of RF are consistent with and reinforce the results of the U.S. NTP studies on cell phone radiation, as both reported increases in the same types of tumors of the brain and heart in Sprague Dolly rats. Sprague Dolly rats. That's, that's a new one. Now, together, these studies provide sufficient evidence to call for the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC, to reevaluate and reclassify their conclusions regarding the carcinogenicity, carcinogenic, blah, 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 that too, carcinogenic potential of RFR in humans. That is from Fiorella. Belpaggi, who is a Ph.D. study author at the R.I. Director of Research. Wow. I don't know that I could get along in another country because I have enough trouble with English. And y'all's names, well, I'm having trouble here. Just saying. So, the Ramazzini study exposed... 2,448 Sprague Dolly rats from prenatal life until their natural death to environmental, quote-unquote, cell tower radiation for 19 hours per day, or 1.8 gigahertz GMS radio frequency radiation of 5, 25, and 50 VM. Wow. Now, RI exposes exposures mimicked base station emissions like those from cell tower antennas and exposure levels were far less than those used in the NTP studies of cell phone radiation. All of the exposures used in the Ramazzini study were below the US FCC limits. Oh Lord, yeah, be concerned. Don't be afraid because that feeds them. But concern is a whole other thing. Concern makes you, you know, start thinking about something to do that will avert this. Whereas fear tends to just trigger the reptilian part of your brain and then the fight or flight shit goes off. And most people, yeah, we know what most people do. In any case, these are permissible exposures according to the FCC. In other words, a person can legally... What did I tell you about legislating? People can legally be exposed to this level of radiation. Yet cancers occurred in these animals at these legally permitted levels. Ramazzini's findings were consistent with the NTP study demonstrating these effects are reproducible findings. That's from Ronald Melnick, who is a Ph.D. and formerly the senior NIH toxicologist who led the design of the NTP study on cell phone radiation and is now a senior science advisor to Environmental Health Trust, or EHT. Governments need to strengthen regulations to protect the public from these harmful non-thermal exposures. Well, but people want faster Download times on their frickin' cell phones. Do you not understand you're walking around with a mini computer? You don't understand that? Okay, this inform important article from one of the most acclaimed institutions 
of its kind in the world provides a major new addition to the technical literature indicating strong reasons for concern about electromagnetic radiation from base stations or cell towers. That's from the editor-in-chief of environmental research, Jose Domingo, who is a Ph.D., professor of toxicology, School of Medicine at Reese University, Catalonia, Spain. The U.S. NTP results combined now with the Ramazzini study reinforce human studies from our team and others providing clear evidence that RF radiation causes acoustic neuro neuroma or vestibular schwannoma, schwannoma wow, and gliomas. I'm not real sure what those are, and should be classified as carcinogenic to humans. Now, just because something gets classified as carcinogenic to humans doesn't mean they get to stop it. Case in point, Monsatan and Roundup with their glyphosate. But this was stated by Lenart Hardell, who is an MD, PhD, a physician epidemiologist with the Department of Oncology, University Hospital, Orebro, Sweden. See, all over the world. And he has published extensively on environmental causes of cancer, including Agent Orange, pesticides, and cell phone radiofrequency radiation. I really think it's a, it's like a, a multi, one-two punch kind of thing. You know, the shit they're putting in the sky and the radio frequencies um, are all working together and people are getting more gallons and... I know, I'm connecting dots that I have absolutely no scientific proof of. That's why I said, I think, not I know. Because I can think a lot of things. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm right. There's a lot of times I think things that are pretty freaking wrong. So, to go on with this, the evidence indicating wireless is carcinogenic has increased and can no longer be ignored. That is from the University of Toronto, Dalai La Dala Lana School of Public Health, Professor Emeritus Anthony B. Miller, M.D., member of the Royal Colleges of Physicians of Canada and the U.K., and senior medical advisor to EHT, who is also a long-term advisor to the World Health Organization. Who? Why do these people have to have such long-ass descriptive names? Hi, I'm Grammy Mary. I live way out here in the boonies. I really don't have much of a oh, socially acceptable education beyond high school. I have some college classes under my belt, but not a whole hell of a lot, basically because I didn't want to go to college because I just couldn't sit through all that bullshit and I couldn't see why you have to pay that kind of money to sit through all that bullshit. And what, see, that's, that's, a, that's basically what... I don't have these weird-ass letters behind my name. Because I just haven't thought of anything yet for the weird-ass bullshit that I would have learned at the School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> I'm, I'm a student of li for life on that one, apparently. Now, this study raises concerns that simply living close to cell phone towers will pose threats to human health. Governments need to take measures to reduce exposure from cell tower emissions. Cell towers should not be near schools, hospitals, or people's homes. Public health agencies need to educate the public on how to reduce exposure from all sources of wireless radio frequency radiation, be it from cell towers or cell phones or Wi-Fi in school. That is from David O. Carpenter, M.D., former dean of the School of Public Health at the University of Albany, Blah, 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 blah. And this is particularly urgent because of current plans to place 5G cell towers about every 300 meters in every street across the country. These 5G small cell antennas will result in continuous exposure to everyone living nearby and everyone walking down the street. The increased exposure will increase risk of cancer and other diseases such as electrohypersensitivity, 
which I'm going to assume, I know, assuming makes an ass out of you and me, mostly me. I'm assuming that means that, yeah, you, you frequencies start messing with you big time. Um, there is also a link to the full press conference on this. Now, the Ramazzini Institute investigators have completed nearly 500 cancer bioassays on more than 200 compounds, and their study design is unique in that animals are allowed to live under their natural deaths or until their natural deaths in order to allow detection of late developing tumors. 80% of all human cancers are late developing, occurring in humans after 60 years of age. This longer observation period has allowed the RI to detect such later occurring tumors for a number of chemicals, and their published research includes studies of um, benzene, xylenes, mencozib, mencozib, formaldehyde, and vinyl chloride. Vinyl chloride. Hmm. I don't know that I want to know about that. Now, the Ramzini research results come in the wake of similar findings from the U.S. National Toxicology Program, or NTP, large-scale experimental studies on cell phone radiation. Both studies statistically significant in, found that statistically significant increases in the development of some types of very rare and highly malignant tumors in the heart of male rats. Um, and this publication is a serious cause for concern. That's from another Annie J. J. Sasko, who's got a plethora of alphabet soup stuff going on behind her name. And she's a member of lots and lots of organizations. She's very well connected. She also commented that some of the results are not statistically significant due to the relatively small number of animals involved. Okay, so if it's not statistically significant, then you just brush it off to the side? Yet, that does not mean that they should be ignored. See, I should have just shut up and just read the next line. Apparently, larger studies could turn out statistically significant results, and in that event, any statistical significance is just one aspect of the evaluation of the relation between exposure and disease. Biological significance and concordance of results between humans and animals clearly reinforces the strength of the evidence of carcinog carcinogenicity. That's a bugger of a word, you know that? For me, at least. Now, the facts that both experimental studies found the same types of rare tumors, which also have pertinence to the human clinical picture, is striking. Thank you, Annie, for saying that. Now, such findings of effects at very low levels are not unexpected. That's from Devra Davis, who also has a plethora of alphabet soup combinations behind her name. And she was um, pointing to a Jacobs University replication animal study published in 2015 that also found very low levels of RFR promoted tumor growth. This study confirms an ever-growing literature and provides a wake-up call to governments to enact protective policy to limit exposures to the public and to the private sector to make safe radiation-free technology available. Well, is it going to be profitable for them? Probably not. Therefore, probably won't happen. But, in January 2017, at an international conference co-sponsored by the Environmental Health Trust and the Israeli Institute for Advanced Study at Hebrew University, Fiorella Belpaggi uh, presented the study designs and the findings that the RFR exposed animals had significantly lower litter weights. She also presented uh, um, slides, or her presentation and slides are available online, 
and the Ramazzini findings of lower litter weights are consistent with the NTP study, which also found lower litter weights in prenatally exposed animals. So at this time, the Italian journal Corrieri published an article about the presentation of the Ramazzini study and quoted Belpaggi's recommendation of maximum precaution for children and pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Noting that current standards were not set to protect children, pregnant women, and the growing number of infants and toddlers from whom devices have become playthings, Davis, who is also a visiting professor of med medicine at Hebrew University Medical Center and guest editor-in-chief of the journal Environmental Research, added that current two-decade-old FCC limits were set when the average call was six minutes and costly cell phones were used by very few. These important new game-changing studies show that animals develop the same types of unusual cancers that are being seen in those few human epi epidemiological epidemiological there we go studies that's another humdinger or dumb hanger that have been done so in light of these results environmental health trust joins with public health experts from the states of california connecticut and maryland as well as those in france israel and belgium to call on governments and the private sector to carry out major ongoing public health educational campaigns to promote safer phone and personal device technology, to require and expedite fundamental changes in hardware and software, to reduce exposures to RFR microwave radiation throughout indoor and outdoor environments, and to institute major monitoring training and research programs to identify solutions, future problems, and prevention of related hazards and risks. So more than a dozen countries recommended reducing radio frequency radiation exposure to children. And countries such as China, Italy, India, and Russia have far more stringent cell tower radiation regulations in place when compared to the United States FCC. How effa. This study provides scientific evidence that governments can use to take um, even further action. Now the article is a um, report of final results regarding brain and heart tumors in Sprague Dolly rats exposed from prenatal life until natural death to mobile phone radio frequency field representative of uh, 1.8 gigahertz base station environmental emissions. So, wow. I don't know about you guys, but wow. There's still more to this article, and I'm just going to go ahead and share it with you because, hmm, I'm already brain frying. Fire them all. There you go, Grim. Fire them. Fire them. Um,. <laughs> ah, Gr I finally catching up in the chat, and Grimmy said that <laughs> if I have cu cucumbers growing out of my ears, it may be time to clean my ears. You know, it might be, hun. <laughs> Having big green things growing out of them. That's not, although, you know, it could be quite the fashion statement. But, um, let's see. And yes, Grim, they can legally kill us a little bit at a time. They know this because they wrote the rules. Isn't it cool how you can get away with that shit when you get to be the one writing the rules? Oop. Um, what's that? Space Observatory Closed for Child Porn. Ah. That's why it was closed. So why? Okay. Mm, Thank you, Ant. He just posted that over on um, realliberty.org. Okay. Thank you, Grandma. I'm going to use that legal slow death. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Now, it's over on RLO and put it over here on this effing site because all you effing people over there, Estrella still finds my stuff interesting from time to time. And there's a few other people as well over here. And, you know, if you want to, come on over to freedomsnetwork.com. Really is a pretty cool site. Love the emoticons. Love the emoticons. But, um, yeah. Thank you, Grim, for that, too. Okay. Now, I also shared a video earlier today um, from a gal that um, her father or her grandfather. Uh, gosh darn it, and I closed that link. I may have to find it afterwards and post it for you. Really was very fascinating. I did post it over on um, RLO for those of you. Pretty cool. Um, what's that, Grim? Oh, that's the lie they're telling. Wasn't closed for... Oh. Oh. Whole town was shut down. Wow. Well, that's kind of wild, isn't it? I wonder what they're trying to hide. You know, every time they have a big brouhaha and everybody's trying to fight to get in front of the camera and tell you how bad someone else is, makes me wonder what the hell's going on that they're distracting everyone else from. And yet, if aliens were coming to invade us, if the sun is getting ready to explode, is there a damn thing you can do about it? No. So... Why fret? Why stew? Why worry? I know an awful lot of people that are, and it's like, mmm. Okay. What? I'm going to go check out my pocket, because I did put some fun, really good stuff, and Java Doctor sent me some awesome links as well. I also put a recipe, and I'll tell you what, I will share this recipe um, with you guys because this is kind of pickles I'm making right now so or actually the cukes are in the fridge right now I rinse the salt water off of them but they're sitting in the fridge till I get done and then I will add the other ingredients to them and then jar them up but yeah a big ass bowl <laughs> of sliced cukes it looks yummy and I love bread and butter pickles so I think I'll put that over on RLO, too. Just cuz. Just cuz. And, you know, um, well, I can't say. Okay, the main ingredients. The, the cucumbers and the onions, I grew myself. So, I don't know where the um, mustard seed came from or the celery seed came from or the vinegar, for that matter. But I also grew my own turmeric for this, too. So turmeric, turmeric, however you wish to pronounce it. And I am growing my own red peppers, too. And banana peppers. So I'm going to be pickling like crazy in my whatever you want to call spare time. So back to my pocket I go. To get to... Um, which one do I want to go to first? Do I want to do David Wolf or do I want to do... I think I will go to Humans Are Free. Because I got a couple of links from Humans Are Free. Humansarefree.com, by the way. Better than any toothpaste? Coconut oil! That's what I use, coconut oil toothpaste. So, did you know that coconut is a very powerful plant which can kill bacteria responsible for teeth damaging? Mm -hmm. Irish scientists have tested coconut oil samples on uh, Streptococcus mutants, and this is the bacteria, <coughs> excuse me, the bacteria that glues to our teeth and causes dental erosion. Coconut oil became the best tool for killing bacteria. 
Now, scientists consider that coconut oil should be the main ingredient in toothpaste and mouth rinsing liquids, and this way our teeth will be more protected than before. Dental care does not get the attention it should get. It occurs in... Or dental caries? Okay. It occurs in 60 to 90 percent of children and it can occur in grown-ups as well. What is dental caries? Hmm. Now, a guide research claim that uh, if coconut oil modified with chemical additives is put into dental hygiene products, it can be the most powerful tool against bacteria and other harmful substances that attack our teeth. I don't know that I want to modify it with chemical additives other than essential oils, but hey. Uh, now, coconut oil, coconut oil also kills the fungus Candida albican, albicans, which causes vaginal discharge, pain, stinging, and burning sensation when urinating. Wow, it's like a multi-purpose thing. And I do like, you. I use coconut oil for cooking and baking and making toothpaste and, yep. So, if you want to make your own coconut-based toothpaste... This formula swaps out the glycerin and uses coconut oil instead. Now the coconut flavor and the essential oil should mask the subtle taste of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda, but you can add a few drops of stevia if you prefer a sweeter paste. And the recipe is 6 teaspoons of aluminum-free baking soda, 1 half teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide, 2 tablespoons of coconut oil warm enough to be liquid, and 10 drops of peppermint, clove, or citrus pure essential oils. Now, mine has clove, orange, and then the On Guard, which is doTERRA's version of Thieves Oil, or Thieves Blend, so. And it also has baking soda. I don't think it has peroxide, though. So, you put baking soda in the bowl, and the other ingredients and mix it until you activate the proper paste texture or achieve the proper paste texture. Then you add a small, okay, add a small amount of baking soda if it's runny and more coconut oil if it's too dry. Now taste it and add more essential oil if you want a more flavorful paste and store in an opaque container required to protect the hydrogen peroxide and use as usual. Now the bonus part is the most simplified toothpaste recipe ever is mixing baking soda and coconut oil 50-50. But a lot of people probably don't like the taste. So that's why, and I'm not real crazy about the taste, but which, that's why I add my essential oils to it. So, how effective is using baking soda? Well, baking soda is used for two reasons. First, it's a mild abrasive that provides a gentle cleansing, and second, it's alkaline. Now, being alkaline, baking soda can neutralize acids in your mouth that are often at the root of tooth decay. And baking soda also absorbs odors and helps produce sweet breath. Another thing that a lot of people, you know, everybody says, well, I use fluoride toothpaste, but I spit it out so it doesn't get in my system. I heard this on a video the other day, and it's very important to remember. When people are having a heart attack, where do they tell them to put that nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin pill? Under their tongue. It gets absorbed into their system faster. So if you are brushing with a toothpaste that's fluoridated, and God knows what other chemicals. I haven't used store-bought toothpaste in, I'm thinking, at least four years. At least four years. Um, but you got to realize that that fluoride is getting into your system via your gums or gingiva and underneath your tongue. You know, because it sits in your mouth until you spit it out. So some of it is getting absorbed into your system. And depending on how many times you brush your teeth a day, then how many days you have lived since you started brushing your teeth, yeah, adds up pretty quick, doesn't it? And then when you realize that you rinse your mouth with fluoridated water, 
it starts to get pretty scary. So, to get back to this, coconut oil is the magic ingredient. Because coconut oil is a key ingredient in homemade toothpaste because it's powerful. And it's got natural antibacterial and antifungal. So it works to kill harmful bacteria in your mouth while you brush. It also is excellent for your gums and brushing with it regularly can eliminate bleeding and sore gums, which is gingivitis. And yeah, if I would have just read farther on, the oil kills the bacteria that's responsible for gingivitis. And if you have gingivitis, you might want to massage some coconut oil into your gums regularly in addition to using your toothpaste. Now brushing your tongue with the oil helps with thrush, which is a fungal problem localized in the mouth. And to boot, coconut oil has been found to stop and even reverse some tooth decay. So, you can buy organic extra virgin coconut oil and they have a link right there in this article and I need to adjust the volume on my ri- because my gedunkers are getting loud. I did not turn it down. I'm sorry. So, I, yeah, I use coconut oil based toothpaste all the time. And I also pull with coconut oil occasionally. I haven't done it that much this summer, but that's one of those things that I tend to uh, do more often in the winter time for some silly reason. I'm not sure why, but eh, that's the way it rolls. Okay. I needed a drink. So, did I put that over No, I didn't. Brush up, brush up, brush up. What was that? Brush up, brush up, brush up with the new Ipana. Did Ipana have fluoride in it? My parents never bought that. It was probably too expensive or something. You know, growing up as a kid, we used just plain baking soda for a while there. Until Dad said, buy some toothpaste. (laughs) That tastes nasty, which, yeah, it's not exactly pleasant, but, oh, well. Uh, Let's see. Brisha, brisha, brisha. I gotta, yeah, I'm trying to, see, I don't have the fun emoticons over here on this RLO. And they place weird. They go at the end of the link, and it's like, mm mm-hmm. I don't know that I want to do that. Hi, Layden again. How are you doing, hon? See you over here on uh, RLO. Now, I will put this over here on the FN site and use my wonderful emoticons. First one with a great big smile. There we go. Shiny teeth. Okay, back to my pocket I go. So, I had a wonderful thing about coconut oil toothpaste. And I have another one from David um, David Wolf, if you would like me to go ahead and just share it. Um, I have some other recipes for making your own natural toothpaste as well. Um... But the David Wolf article has a study, references a study that, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just read it. DavidWolf.com, by the way. Coconut oil is better than toothpaste. Apparently, dental health is crucial to one's overall well-being, and coconut oil toothpaste is a proven solution to dental issues. Which, yes, it dental health is crucial. You get an abscess, man... N- Besides the fact that it's painful as hell, that infection goes throughout your system really, really fast and gets to your brain really fast, too. And see, I'm saying this shit in the next damn line. Several infections of the mouth can cause other problems within the body. Like heart disease, stroke, dementia, respiratory problems have all been linked to poor dental health. So to help keep the body healthy, regular visits to the dentist is recommended 
So what about between visits? What's the best way to keep your mouth healthy? Brush up, brush up, brush up. With the coconut oil toothpaste. That I know that doesn't sound as cool as Ipana, but ah. And I just went to the dentist. He filled one hole and found another. Damn it. But it's not metal fillings. That's a good thing. Now, <clears throat> coconut oil toothpaste might be the next step in dental health due to sensitivity. Over-the-counter toothpaste and rinses are just too irritating. And many will be happy that coconut oil alternative is being researched. What? Okay, apparently I just got this thing from Facebook. Did you hear that McDonald killed Burger King in front of Popeyes over that gal, Wendy? The funeral's at KFC. Are you going? I'm taking the subway. <laughs> Did it over at Popeyes. I like Popeyes, but Wendy? Nah, I heard Wendy's a shameless hussy. Moving along. I know, distractions. Now, coconut oil natural remedies have been all the craze lately, and for good reason, because coconut oil benefits are endless. It's been a great antibacterial, uh, has great antibacterial properties that hold significant benefits to the mouth. And in a recent study from the Athlon Institute of Technology on different oils and their benefits toward mouth health, coconut oil was shown to be the best. Now, coconut oil, when treated with digestive enzymes, does an excellent job of stopping bacterial growth in the mouth, and this includes a bacteria with the S mutation. And S mutations, or streptococcus mutants, are acid-producing bacteria, and they combine tooth decay, or they contribute to tooth decay in both adults and children, yada, yada. You know, this is pretty much what I said with the other one, so let's get to, there we go. So, Dr. Damien Bradley, who is a lead researcher at Athlon Institute of Technology, said incorporating enzyme-modified coconut oil into dental hygiene products could be an attractive alternative to chemical additives, particularly as it works at relatively low concentrations. Also, with increasing antibiotic resistance, which I heard about another one that's out there now, antibiotic resistant bug. It's important that we turn our attention to new ways to combat microbial infection. So using a more natural solution for toothpaste is a great choice for anyone trying to avoid harmful chemicals. And many kinds of toothpaste contain triclosan, sodium lauryl sulfate, fluoride, and artificial sweeteners like aspartame. And each of these chemicals can cause health problems. Triclosan has been linked to endocrine disruption that can cause several different cancers. Also, sodium lauryl sulfate, which creates the foaming action in toothpaste, has been shown to affect the taste buds, which increase the bitter taste. And another common practice is coconut oil pulling, which is what I do from time to time. Well, at least a couple times a week. You simply swish one tablespoon of coconut oil in your mouth for 5 to 20 minutes on an empty stomach. Do not swallow the coconut oil. When you're finished, spit it out. It's believed to help remove toxins and bacteria. And I got to tell you, when I do that, it makes my teeth feel like I just got them cleaned only without the gritty crap. You know, the gritty stuff comes from the baking soda toothpaste, but... Um, you know when they clean your teeth and they use that gritty shit to polish and then you have to do the swishy, swishy spit stuff? Well, this works without having to do all that. And this also has a recipe for um, a natural toothpaste. So I'll go ahead and share it as well. Seeing as how we're coconutty today. You put the lime in the coconut and bring it all up. Hi, Rob Works. I know, sweetie, you were in and out and in and out. Thank you for doing that bubbler, hon. I appreciate it. We need the bubbler because I'm, fro I'm not frothing at the mouth anymore because I'm using coconut oil toothpaste. <laughs> 
It's that other shit that's bad for you that makes you froth at the mouth when you do all that toothpaste. Okay. Moving along. Uh, now I'm going to get to some not so good stuff. This one is also from Humans Are Free. And it was posted um, June of last year, I believe. FDA quietly bans another cheap cancer treatment, intravenous vitamin C. Yay. You sneaky little buggers. It would be naive to think that the FDA endeavors to protect the public's health as its primary focus. Indeed, that would be a conflict of interest as it serves its masters, the pharmaceutical industry. So has the Food and Drug Administration engineered a shortage of intravenous vitamin C as part of an overall attack on natural and non-toxic approaches to healing that compete with prescription drugs? Well, an analysis by Natural Blaze would suggest the answer is yes. Natural Blaze claims that the critical shortage of IV bags in general followed an FDA ban on the mass production of intravenous vitamin C. The FDA limited the availability of IVC and the pharmaceutical industry halted production of injectionable vitamins and minerals. That's after a 60 minute story about the miraculous recovery of a swine flu patient on life support. Now because of the shortage of IVC, doctors called upon comp um, Doctors called upon compounding pharmacies to produce it. But the FDA began to limit compounding pharmacies after injectionable steroids produced by the New England Compounding Center were contaminated with a fungus that caused a deadly outbreak of meningitis. Now, here's an example of an entire industry being punished for the dubious practices of one compounding pharmacy. That's always the way it works. One ah shit erases 99 attaboys. That's just the way this system works. Once you realize it, then you can start working to change it. So, if you wish to try to follow the convoluted story, doctors began to source NECC for its more expensive product because cheaper generic versions were in short supply. But it was the FDA's increased inspection of drug factories that disrupted the supply chain in the first place. So the meningitis deaths were in part caused by the erroneous actions of the FDA. Hmm. Kind of like... Um, when the Fed refused to um, hand out a little bit of money to some cash-strapped banks back before the Depression really kicked in because they wanted those banks to go under the Federal Reserve. Yeah, that's, that's something a lot of people don't know. Now, Natural Blaze reports that without anyone noticing and by many indirect means of banning production of the bags or shutting down those doing the production of the bags and the inject injectable vitamins and minerals, access to IV solutions for innumerable treatments for diseases have gone into critical shortage. So could the shortage of IVC be part of the effort to limit alternative cancer therapies? Well, DrWhitaker.com states that vitamin C is a potent antioxidant that has the power to boost immune function. It increases resistance to infection and protects against a wide range of diseases. But there's an entirely different and largely unknown role of vitamin C. And that is its ability, when administered in very high doses by intravenous infusions, to kill cancer cells. Best of all, and unlike virtually all conventional chemotherapy drugs that destroy cancer cells, it is selectively toxic. No matter how high the concentration, vitamin C does not harm healthy cells. 
Dr. Whitaker also continues to say that the only way to get blood levels of vitamin C to the concentrations required to kill cancer cells is to administer it intravenously. For example, 10 grams of IV vitamin C raises blood levels 25 times higher than the same dose taken orally. And this increases up to 70 fold as doses get larger. So when the human body is challenged by pathogens or needs to heal from injuries or surgery, its requirement from vitamin C increases considerably. And if hospitals routinely administered intravenous ascorbic acid, a proven and inexpensive treatment, patient outcomes would improve. When one weighs the, weighs the risk of infection from deadly superbugs in hospitals today, IV vitamin C as a preventative safeguard makes all the more sense. So, and if you want to learn how to secure IV vitamin C in advance of a hospital stay for yourself or a family member, um, there's some advice and a, a link here to DrYourself.com. You will also learn how to deal with objections from physicians and hospital administrators regarding this alt-health remedy. Why is it considered alt-health? It's original health, you know, using natural components to allow your, assist your body to heal itself. That's not alt-health, that's original health. <sighs> Apparently, it's going to require some moxie to do this, but it may also save your life. Now, supporters of Obama death care believe that access to affordable health care is the most important consideration. But of even greater concern should be the ability to choose your own treatment modality, such as IVC. In other words, medical freedom of choice trumps universal access. Many of us involved in the health freedom movement are outraged by the disregard for the natural rights by unelected federal bureaucracies such as the FDA. And we hope that one day when a critical mass of aware citizens will hold their elected officials accountable, as if, to overturn toxic policies that favor Big Pharma's obscene profits over our health and well-being. That day is long overdue, and yes, that day is long overdue, but holding the selected representatives accountable, nah, that ain't going to change nothing. Ain't going to change nothing. So, yeah, I'd heard intravenous vitamin C worked, but... You know, I, I hadn't really looked into it all that much. Needed a sip. But now I think I'm going to check it out a little bit more. Just to, you know, top off. And I do have ascorbic acid that I need to... I You know, that's my wintertime thing pretty much. In the summer, I do pretty good. I mean, I have allergies and shit, but I keep that around for in the wintertime because, yeah, sometimes I need mega doses, but it's not just vitamin C. You also need other, min and I don't remember what other minerals it is now. Maybe I'd, you know what? I'm at a computer. I could probably look that up. <laughs> Vitamins and minerals that help with the absorption of vitamin C because sometimes when you inundate the body with vitamin C, it doesn't get absorbed by the body because you don't have enough of the other minerals and vitamins that make it to where your body can absorb it. So everything is interconnected. You know, it's, it's like um, an erector set. We're just a walking, talking erector sets here. Everything's interconnected. Oh, let's see. Um, and I think the FDA just pretty much needs to be erratic. Of course, I think every 
Alphabet Soup Agency needs to be eradicated. My personal thoughts. Because, yeah. Basically, from, from what I have been given to understand, the regulations that they come out with are supposed to apply to federal employees. And yet they apply to all of us. And then they start doing stuff, you know, rules and regulations that are not law. They're just rules and regulations in the agency. And yet they are treated as law. And somewhere along the way, some, some, that got confused. You know, their, their interagency rules and regulations are not laws. There is a difference. Okay. I'm just going to do this one because, yeah, they do an awful lot of this crap behind our backs or where nobody notices, you know, not necessarily. Not, a lot of times it's done right to our faces, but nobody notices because they're dangling that. Oh, that guy over there, he did something to me. I don't remember the year, but I was 15 years old. <clears throat> Honey, can't you do math or did you just do common core the whole time? I'm just curious. Okay. What? I got notifications popping up like crazy. Um, hi, Sean. Over here on Fakey Book. And Tessa. Yay. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Find something that's not quite so angering. You know, I really seriously thought about doing the, the British tourist with the turtle in the vajayjay, but um, <laughs> I think just mentioning it is enough. <laughs> Thank you, Circles, for tagging me in that. Okay. Wow. Uh, scrolling down, I'm finding more stuff that, yeah. So... Let's just go with this one. You know, since I did the FDA pisses me off, and I already mentioned Monsanto, let's just go here. This is from MarchAgainstMonsanto.com. It's from March of this year. Monsanto's $125 million deal to flood the market with new GMOs, strawberry, wheat, and more. Yay. So, there's a lot more to the Monsanto company than meets the eye. Aside from its line of toxic herbicides and genetically engineered seeds, they've also been involved in everything from the production of Agent Orange during the Vietnam War to cancer-causing PCBs. So, while the company continually states that its purpose is to feed the world, yeah, they don't tell you what they're going to feed the world, just feed the world. Let's feed them this poison and see what happens. Yeah, they're going to feed the world by creating GMOs and chemicals, which is an assertion the United Nations has repeatedly disagreed with. It is still heavily involved in our food supply from seed to harvest. And now, thanks to a new partnership with a cutting-edge startup out of California, Monsanto could soon be flooding the market with more GMOs, including one of the world's favorite fruits. And, as usual, absolutely nothing will be labeled, meaning that it will be up to the consumer to figure out which foods are GMO and which aren't on their own time. Now, their new project will focus specifically on longer-lasting new GMO foods in an effort to combat food waste. Yeah. Uh-huh. According to its press release, Monsanto is investing $125 million in gene editing technology through a new partnership with uh, Pearwise Plants, which is a California agricultural startup that will help Monsanto to create gene edited corn, soybeans, cotton, and canola crops. Yay! Now, this new technology is said to be the next big thing in the GMO industry. And it allows scientists to play God with our food by altering foods even quicker in a laboratory setting, bestowing upon them new traits like the inability to show signs of rotting or wasting. 
Oh, that's lovely. So among new varieties of GMO crops, Perrywise is also expected to work with Monsatan on a new GMO wheat, as well as GMO fruits, including the potential to create GMO strawberries. Now my co-founders and I believe the technologies we have each been developing can be prof or can have a profound impact in plant agriculture and will speed innovation that is badly needed to feed a growing population amid challenging conditions created by climate change. Yeah. In other words, fear porn. That's from Perry Wise founder J. Keith Young about the new arrangement. Yeah, it's an arrangement, all right. So, with the recent European approval of the merger with Bayer set, Monsatan is now upping the ante like never before. Yeah, that's already done. And uh, it's becoming more clear than ever that their vision for the future of food is exactly what we thought it was. One filled with frankenfood experiments, crops doused with cancer-linked chemicals, and an increasingly dominant level of control over the food system. You control the food, you control the nation. More so than controlling the money. I think if you control the food, you control a nation. You control the world. Now the alleged goal of this new pairing is to create foods that will last longer on store shelves. But what's good is longer lasting food, or what good is long, longer lasting food if the health consequences are unknown due to lack of long term testing and the creation of new foods that are inherently foreign to the body? Already, one Columbia University study has shown that this type of gene editing can create hundreds of unintended mutations. Now, it's not known whether this extends to gene-edited foods, but now the question is, do you want to be the guinea pig? Monsatan is hoping that the answer to that question is a resounding yes, as it has been for so much of the unsuspecting general public over these past few decades. Just say no to GMO and anything to do with Monsatan. Yes, Grimmy, marching in March. That's why they call it March. You're supposed to march that month. I do not want frankenfood strawberries. Not at all. I like my strawberries just the way they are. On natural. I don't even need whippy cream or none of that stuff. Neither does my youngest grandson. He'll just... He goes out there and it doesn't make darn bit of difference if they're still kind of green. He'll eat them. He don't care. He loves his strawberries. Okay. Franken food. And get that over on the effing side as well. Holy crap, it's getting late. I need to go check out the pig. Here on this Freaker Friday. Was Vinny on earlier today? Or was he just sharing a ponder gander on, on Twitter? I'm just curious. Because if he was, it's like, damn it, Vinny. I mean, I popped in and I saw it. Then I went back out to, basically, I had to change batteries for my weed eater. Because I don't have a gas-powered weed eater. That's too heavy. I'm a wimp. <laughs> I have a battery one. And I have to change out batteries all the time. Because I got a big yard. But. I know I'm whining. And I'm doing a lot of gers. I need to stop doing all these gers. I need to find something that's not so. Not so gerish. Hmm. Maybe it is time I go to the pig. See what happened this date in history. That's what I need to do. I really think I do. So. PIGazette.com. What are Hambo and Porcus up to today? I saw Hambo's, or yeah, Hambo's lovely bride on Fakey Book this morning. 
So, the word of the day over here on Pig Gazette. Feelings, whoa, 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 feelings. Yeah, it's a notoriously hypersensitive oppression early warning system that perpetually depl- is perpetually deployed by properly hyphenated pinheads. Wow, that's almost a tongue twister. Okay, and in their quotable quotes. What a load of crap. I'm talking about the sexual abuse allegations from 1982 against Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, I keep seeing that stuff all the time. It has nothing to do with suitability for the court. It has nothing to do with sexual harassment. It's part of the unrelenting war by leftist Democrats against the constitutional process. Elections don't matter. The rights of the people do not matter. All that matters is the power of Democrats. The new precedent, if a Republican president wishes to appoint a Supreme Court justice, he cannot do so. That justice will be accused of sexual harassment or racism. No evidence will be offered or required. It's not about evidence. It's about shaming people who disagree. That is from Dr. Hurd. Yes, dear. Oh, he's waiting on me to come back to the dork table? Well, hmm. Hmm. I'll have to find out how things go with my new outside-the-home job as to if I'll be able to do that or not. In the Tasty Tidbits section, Gentlemen, it is better to have died a small boy than to fumble the football. That's from John Heisman. Really? How about, I make my practices real hard because if the player is a quitter, I want him to quit and practice, not in a game. That's from Bear Bryant. Apparently, these are all football things. And, okay, those that was enough. That was, if you want to read all of them, come on over to pigazette.com. Check it out. Um, oh, good God. From the dailycaller.com. High school senior is no longer suspended for buying an extra chicken nugget. What? This is over here on PI Gazette, by the way. Apparently, the principal at a high school in Knoxville, Tennessee, has decided to rescind a suspension given to senior Carson Kohler after Kohler made the mistake of purchasing an extra chicken nugget in the school cafeteria. Kohler, an Eagle Scout and the captain of the drum line at Fargut Fargut High School, received a one-day suspension on Monday because he took six chicken nuggets instead of the customary five nuggets and then duly paid for the sixth nugget. Apparently, the Daily Caller is not making this up. The reason for his suspension was theft of property. That's a report from the Knoxville News Sentinel. My Eagle Scout, captain of the drumline, all-around hard-working and well-rounded teenager, just got suspended from a day of school and after-school band practice for taking an extra chicken nugget from the lunch line, Kohler's mother said. And uh, I almost don't have words here. Does my son really deserve suspension over hunger, especially when they have the ability to charge his lunch account for items, which they did? How is it theft if he paid for it? It's food. Well, okay, that could be iffy. Now, she noted that her son would henceforth be known as the Nugget Bandit and wondered if the suspension would become an issue on her son's permanent academic record. Now, the story has a happy ending as far as interactions with America's taxpayer-funded school officials tend to go. Because by Tuesday morning, Kohler Waller, which is the mother, had sent a letter to multiple school administrators and had spoken to Firegut High uh, High Principal Ryan Seib on the phone. I know it wasn't your intention to overcharge Carson. And I know it was not my son's intent to steal an extra nugget from you, 
she wrote in the letter, presumably with a totally straight face, according to the new Sentinel. He was hungry. He took six total nuggets. She um, actually had to explain in the letter to the government officials. He entered his number and the cashier rang him up. The cashier then realized Carson had more food than what she calculated. He entered his number again and paid the additional charge. Everything on his tray was paid for prior to him walking away. He was then asked for his name and told to sit in another area and speak to the principal. Now he was able to show the visual evidence that cafeteria workers charged her son... Carson three times for his fateful chicken nugget lunch. One charge was an extra lunch charge of $2.75, another charge of $2.50 for an ordinary lunch, and the third charge was a kind of mysterious, also $2.75. So after she talked to Saib, the principal, Saib agreed to overturn the suspension. He um, addressed my letter promptly and, after additional investigation, quickly lifted Carson's suspension. And apparently Mother wrote this on her as an update to original Facebook post. Honestly, I appreciate the way he handled this. He was very willing to review the situation and make things right. Carson only missed part of his first class today. Well... I don't know that I'd want my child to be going to a school that was that frickin' maniacal. I mean, cry mini Christmas, that's a frickin' expensive chicken McNugget. It really is. Oh, well. This date in history, the 21st of September, 1893, gas pedal takes meaning with the first ride in U.S.-made gas-powered car. This date in history, the 21st of September, 1957, Perry Mason begins his impressive winning streak on CBS TV. I like the old Perry Masons. I really did. Um, and lastly, this date in history, the 21st of September, 1957, Mark Levine, that fiery champion of the Constitution, individual liberty, and true conservatism is born kicks level of human intelligence up several notches. Hmm. Well, that's what happened this date in history. And uh, come on over to PIGazette.com and say hey to Hambo and Porcus. Don't tell them I sent you. They may block you. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> But check out all of their stuff. They've got Pig Prattler and Hambo's Hammer and Gospel According to Porcus's Pitchfork and all kinds of dumpster diving stuff. And yeah, all kinds of links on both sides of their homepage. So go on and check them out. They are kind of entertaining from time to time and informative from time to time as well. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> I saw that meme, trust no one, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was molested by Lincoln. I, I did see that meme <laughs> over on Fakey Book. Um, oh, cool. So... Let's go back to my pocket. I do have a few other things I wanted to get to that are not quite so obnoxious. Um, how about I go with this one? This is... Um, Where did I put it now? There it is. From personalliberty.com. Three steps to a healthier thyroid. Now, thyroid is really pretty important, peeps. So, and it's not just a female thing. 
Guys have thyroid issues as well. So, did you know that you should suspect your thyroid if you experience undue fatigue, depression, weight gain, memory loss, hair loss, muscle cramps, dry skin, decreased libido, cold feet, confusion, delirium, or any heart rhythm problems? True to the mainstream medical philosophy of symptomology, the pharmaceuticals have naturally come up with a drug for each one of these symptoms. But if you want to relive or to relieve any or all of these conditions, the simple truth is that you should look to improve the health of your thyroid gland. There are three critical steps that you must take to accomplish this and get back to optimal health and having energy and well-being. Step one is making sure you're getting enough of the vital nutrients that keep your thyroid working optimally. Now these nutrients include zinc, which assists in the synth synthesis of thyroid hormones. Blah, blah, damn it, I'm having trouble tonight. Iodine, which helps convert and release your thyroid hormones. Selenium, which balances your T4 hormones and assists in the synthesis of thyroid hormones. That's a lot of sis 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 that's going on. And ash ashwangada root, which helps regulate the autoimmune inflammation that is behind so many thyroid problems. So... And there is a link here. You can get peak thyroid support, and that supposedly has all of those things combined if you wish to purchase it through that link. Now, step number two is to, to improving your thyroid health is to heal your gut. Because you see, a leaky gut can trigger that autoimmune inflammation that we just talked about, crippling your thyroid function. So for this step, you need to include more probiotics in your diet in both supplement form and natural foods like kefir and kom kombucha and yogurt and kimchi. You also should be sure to get plenty of gut healing foods like bone broth and healthy fats from avocados, coconut oil, olive oil, and egg yolks. And from what I understand, be very, very careful where you get your avocados from. Because apparently most of them are grown out in California and the water out there has very high fluoride levels. So it may not exactly be in your best interest to be eating avocados. Now avoid foods that could irritate your digestive tract including gluten, dairy, and sugary snacks. And finally, take 5 grams of L-glutamine powder two times daily to help repair your gut. The third and final step is to de-stress. You may think you're stressed because of your low thyroid, but it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. Which came first? Whatever the answer really is, stress can have a negative effect on your thyroid function. So learn how to manage your stress through meditation, deep breathing techniques, yoga, and other exercises, and you'll boost your happiness and the health of your thyroid. So see, it's not all that difficult. And I actually do have a, a, a thyroid support vitamin that I take. So, what's that? Oh, you've had many Myers cocktail? Ah, cool, sock puppet. It's an intravenous nutrient mixture invented by John Myers containing magnesium, calcium, various B vitamins, and vitamin C. Sweet! That's awesome. Thank you, sock puppet. I don't like needles, though. <laughs> That's a drawback. Me and needles just, nah. Just not going to go there. Not unless I absolutely positively have to do it. Okay. Salute. 
Uh, let me get this put over here on the F side, and then I will go back to my pocket again. I did. I really put a lot of stuff in my pocket the last couple of days. It's a good thing. Okay, we'll do this and this and this, and do that little guy just because he's cute. Okay, back to my pocket I go. Now, from ehealthmags.com, those of you who imbibe in cannabis, <laughs> I have CBD oil. That's about all the imbibing I do anymore. So, um, more evidence that cancer commits suicide by eating itself after exposure to cannabis. Now, this is from September of this year, September the 16th, to be more precise. Christina Sanchez, who is a molecular biologist from um, Competence University in, oh, I know I buggered that, in Madrid, first reported that in 1998 and that tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, which is the primary psychoactive component of cannabis, induces tumor cell suicide while leaving healthy non-tumor cells alone. Now, she discovered that when exposed to THC, tumor cells not only ceased to multiply and proliferate, but also destroyed themselves, both in lab tests and animal trials. A Harvard study from 2007, which remains the most comprehensive ever released on THC's potential to combat tumors, also found that in just three weeks, doses of THC were able to cut lung cancer tumor growth in half in mice subjects that were able to reduce cancer lesions by even more. Now, chemical components of cannabis called cannabinoids activate specific receptors found throughout the body to produce pharmacologic effects, particularly in the central nervous system and the immune system. Now commercially available, <coughs> excuse me, commercially available canna cannabinoids, uh, dro uh, dronabinol and nambolone are FDA-approved drugs for the treatment of cancer-related side effects. Oh, so if they're for treatment of cancer-related side effects, and they actually deal with the cancer itself, then the oncologist can say, well, the chemotherapy and radiation worked. Those other things were just for the side effects. Hi, see how this shit... Okay, I know, I'm just postulating, but still. So, when inhaled or consumed, cannabis cannabinoids are incorporated into the body's natural endocannabinoidal system that regulates a lot of biological functions such as appetite, food intake, motor behavior, and product reproduction, among others. And because of this, tumor cells are thrust into a state of apoptosis, meaning they self-destruct. You know, I, I, I know the, the uh, appetite, food intake, motor behavior. Not so sure about that reproduction stuff. <laughs> but I have personal experience at the appetite, food intake, and motor behavior. <laughs> now, Sanchez explains that cells can die in different ways. And after cannabinoid treatment, they were dying in the clean way. They were committing suicide. One of the advantages of cannabinoids is that they target specifically the tumor cells. They don't have any toxic effect on normal non-tumor cells. And this is an advantage with respect to standard chemotherapy, which tar targets basically everything. I cannot understand why in the U.S. cannabis is under Schedule 1 because it is pretty obvious, not only from our work, but from the work of many other researchers, that the plant has very wide therapeutic potential, which is why it's illegal. Because it cuts into Big Pharma's profit margin. 
Now, the federal government recently admitted that cannabis is effective in shrinking certain types of cancer cells. The unexpected and groundbreaking declaration was made in a recent update to the National Institute on Drug Abuse Information Sheet on Medical Marijuana. The NIDA statement read, Recent animal studies have shown that marijuana can kill certain cancer cells and reduce the size of others. Evidence from other animal studies suggests that extracts from the whole plant marijuana can shrink one of the most serious types of brain tumors. And research in mice showed that these extracts, when used with radiation, increase the cancer-killing effects of the radiation. Hmm. So, once again, all you puff puff passers, you just keep puff puff passing. I will be a little more selective on the intake just just cuz I have easier access to certain things. What's that? Oh, my goodness. Craziness, craziness. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork now. And granted, I'm not saying that a lot of these people did not go through a sexual assault in some way or another. But why is everybody grabbing the limelight now? Is that like the new thing to jump out there and say, yeah, I was raped. Apparently, I was way before my time. Because I talked about it a lot to anyone who would ask and explain to them what you need to do. Or what I think you need to do. But, that's a whole other discussion. You know, this shit of just doing it for the limelight. Yes, it's cathartic to get it out there, but... Really? Okay. We'll do a puff puff pass on that one. And I'll put this over here on the Effin site. And I have a little more time yet. So hey. Hi Estrella. I see you posting stuff over here. On this Effin site. How you doing lady? Okay. We will do that one. And we will do this one. And this one. Yeah because we got to do the puff puff passy guys. Now, I think I have time for one more out of my pocket. Whew, I got a cool breeze coming in the house. Um, let's see. Do I want to do that one? Do I want to do... Uh, let's come up here. Now this is, some, and I probably won't get all the way through it. It's also from uh, Humans Are Free. Had a lot of them from Humans Are Free today. I kind of kept scrolling. So, a great transformation, a world awakening. I kind of sort of started reading this earlier, and then I went, no, no, I got to get my ass back outside. So, I got to admit, this isn't just a dry run kind of thing. I did kind of start reading this earlier today. So, yes. How is what going to help? Uh, true Rob works. Well, okay. If you're asking about the, the, you know, these people, everybody jumping out and saying, I was, it can be kind of cathartic to just admit. But jumping out and saying, you know, so you can bring someone down, basically. It's like, really? Come on. <sighs> you had all of this opportunity prior to. It's not until they were in a position that you didn't want them to be in that you finally stepped up. So... Yeah, you know, don't, I don't think people, 
whether it's male or female that have been sexually assaulted, I don't think they should hold it in because man, oh man, oh man, that, that nasty little imp runs around inside your head and will fuck shit up. Uh, you need to talk about it and you need to understand that it's someone else's doing. Doesn't make a shit and bit of difference if you were dressed like a nun or a hooker. If somebody's got that on their mind, they're going to do it. And it really has very little to do with sex other than sex is used as the weapon. Because it's a power trip. It's a control trip. It is a theft of your ability to make decisions about your own body. That's what it is. It's a power trip. But back to this. We are currently living in the most profoundly transformative times the history of the planet. Never mind the Industrial Revolution or even the advent of our current techno wonder world. This is a time of awakening consciousness on a planetary level. And not one single being or location on the earth will remain untouched. Now, of course, you may not be remotely aware of this as we each experience life depending upon where we put our attention. In other words, where you focus is what you will see more of. And right now, there is a reality show of intentional proportions grabbing the spotlight from nightly news to social media. However, those of us looking in another direction are perceiving an expansion in consciousness of a cosmic magnitude. <laughs> Grim, you weirdo. <laughs> Oh, the yeah. Sign that contract. Those contracts are just absolutely asinine. That's just bullshit. That's just bullshit. It's another control mechanism. It's someone else stepping in and telling you what you can do. It's a control mechanism. It's stupid. They are mentally raping you. You're getting mind fucked with that shit. Because they're telling you it's for your own good. That's a mind fuck. Okay, moving along. Back to this awakening. <laughs> well, going from mind fuck to awakening. Whee! Now, in 2008, after a 13-year unexpected sojourn living on the street and being carried around the world with no visible means of support, I returned to Bozeman and wrote a little book called The Evolution Revolution, a handbook for personal and global transformation. Now, it was a work based on my own awakening and recognition that whatsoever we do for another, we are to or for another, we are doing to or for our own selves, for good or ill. And it spoke of a way of cultivating self-awareness and expanding consciousness. And it was published in the midst of the Great Recession. So, unfortunately... <laughs> Now, nine years later, we're experiencing uh, the consequences of that great recession and the decisions made during that recession. And we're experiencing them with a vengeance. There's a nationwide dissatisfaction of such profound depth that it led to an unprecedented rejection of establishment thinking and the elevation of an anti-hero into a position of power. I'm not so sure about that part. Meanwhile, the energetics of transformation, not to be trifled with by out-of-control egos of any stature, are barreling on and showing up globally. In all of this, we are witnessing what this author calls the Great Transformation, which is a period of societal upheaval and political antics indicating the death throes and approaching dissolution of the old paradigm. On one hand, that's on one hand, and on a greater acceptance of our interdependence arising in the multitudes, leading us toward a new way of being in harmony with life, on the other hand. So where does that leave us as individuals? You know, the little people who feel powerless to have any impact in the face of all this turbulence? 
Where does the average Joe, who's a decent, hardworking, live and let live kind of guy, who abhors how things are but doesn't have a clue what to do about it, where do they find the power to make a difference if he is not a protester or an activist or a billionaire or a celebrity or a CEO? Well, if we are not simply reactive organisms responding to stimuli like Pavlov's dogs, we have the profoundly influential power of intentional conscious choice. We can choose where to put our attention. We can choose what to feed our energy with our energy. We can choose what to support with our money. We can choose how to respond to what we perceive. And we can choose the words and tone of voice in our speaking. We can choose the attitude and intention that we bring into the, our world and more specifically our community. It's actually quite simple. The key to the power of the individual is in relationship because the basis of a harmonious life in any society depends upon our interrelatedness and how we choose to treat each other on a daily basis. We needn't wait for a natural disaster to evoke a sense of all in this together because we are quite frankly all in this together. We needn't wait for a catastrophe to inspire kindness and cooperation and consideration. We can choose to embody those qualities and express them in every encounter, every day, and with every race, religion, nationality, gender, or even political in affiliation. So start where you are. Simplest way is to say it. Be friendly. We can choose to be friendly and pleasant when we engage with others, whether they're the cashier that's waiting on us or the waitress or whomever else we interact with on the street. We can choose to be kind, supportive, and complimentary in every one of our transactions. In a world that is speeded up exponentially, just be willing to spend the moment it takes to be still and listen to what another wants to express as a, and it's a kindness. All around us, folks are working at jobs we've done or jobs we would never want to do. And these people are not nameless ciphers. They're our neighbors, someone's mother or father or sister or child or loved one. And they are serving us in the positions that they occupy. So what if we expressed appreciation for their service and made their encounter with us a moment of warmth and connection? What if we, the way we behave made someone want to say, you just made my day? The change we want to see in our world is not something that can be legislated or imposed from without. It's something we must achieve, or it's not something we can achieve through protest. It is something that can only come from within each one of us, choosing to bring a little more kindness into our way of being as we go about the business of living our lives. Quantum physics tells us how the observer affects what that which is it observes. And this is the way we as individuals affect our collective reality. It's how you observe it, how you interact it. Whatsoever we embody and express creates the world in which we live. So I am just about out of time. There's a little bit more to this and I did kind of cut to the chase and a little bit of it. So go ahead and read it yourself. But thank you all for listening in. I will be back next week, Wednesday, for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. But be sure to check back because later on this evening is Grimner and, and Moose Girl with the Freakers Ball. And um, tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow, the Dork Table at noon Eastern Time. Then at noon or... Yeah, at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to be popping on the radio on Sunday. I won't be around this weekend going to see my youngest daughter. Um, but Grim's going to be popping on the radio Sunday at noon to play some blues. And I'm sure there'll be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat. 
And uh, following Grimm will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. It's always a lot of brain food in that one. Always. And please have an awesome, awesome weekend. I know I won't be around. (laughs) Busy, busy, busy. Seems like the more spare time I thought I'd have, the less I have. Whew. And uh, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough, as in enough rain to appreciate the sunshine, enough sadness to appreciate the smiles, and enough heat to appreciate when it cools down like it is out here right now. So, have an amazing rest of your day. And I will catch y'all in the funny papers. Good night.